All right, I want to go over confidence intervals. Uh, I'm going to try to get through like four four sections or four equations. Um, so we'll do confidence intervals for population mean when the population standard deviation is known when it's unknown and confidence interval for population proportion and confidence interval for population standard deviation or variance. Okay, so let's start with population mean with population standard deviation known. So your equation looks like this. Alright, it is an interval. That's where your plus or minus comes from. So let's work one out um, with the given information being we want 91 or 94% confidence interval. We have standard deviation of 17. X bar is 123. And N is 20. Okay, so our equation is going to look like this. 123 um, plus or minus the z-score of alpha over 2. So we have a confidence level of 94%. So 1 minus, one minus 0.94 equals 0 0.06. That's our alpha over 2. 0.03. So if you go to the z-table and in the body of the z-table, find 0 0.0300, you will come up with a z-score of 1.88. And since this is Z table, that means the curve is symmetrical, so we have plus and minus 1.88 times 17 over square root of 20. So that gives you, where is it? 115.5. Eight five to one thirty point one five. So that's the confidence interval. That translates to there is a ninety four percent confidence level that the population the population mean lies in between one. 115.85 and 130.15. Don't forget, we're, this is a confidence interval for the population mean. And we're 94% sure that it's in between these two numbers. So that's how that worked out. Uh, we'll do another one with... See, that one we had sigma known. Population standard deviation was known. We'll do one with population standard deviation unknown. Actually, before I go on, you can use the calculator, go stat, test, and then number seven is Z interval, enter, and then use, it's got data and stats, use stats, plug those numbers in, and it'll spit out your confidence interval. But it's best to do it both ways to make sure you got it right, obviously. So for standard deviation, population standard deviation unknown, 
We use the tea tables. And we use sample standard deviation. So for the given information is 18.8 sample mean S sub X is 19.8. We want a 99% confidence interval. And our N is 1006. Now I didn't tell you on the last one. Um, it doesn't apply to the T tables. But on the Z tables, um, in some of the books, it gives you a little cheat sheet on the bottom. It just says confidence interval critical value Z sub alpha over 2. And then it lists them. And it didn't apply to us because we have 0.94. But if you have 0.95 or 95%, it's 1.96. It's just quick and easy. So with the T tables, we're going to go degrees of freedom, N minus 1,006. Now, we don't have 1,006 on our T tables. But we do have 1,000, so we'll use that. So 1,000, and our alpha, let's work that out again just so no one forgets. So we got 1 minus 0.99 equals our alpha, which is 0 0.01. Now we have to divide that by 2 because it's an interval. So we need 0 0.005 at 1,000 degrees of freedom in your T-table, which gives you 0 0.005 at 1,000, gives you 2.581 is your T-score. And again, T is a symmetrical curve. So we have X bar is 18.8 .8 plus or minus 2.581, which is your T score alpha over 2. And you want to multiply that by S sub X. 19.8 over the square of 1006. We come up with 17. I'll leave that up. 17.189, comma. 20.411 Translation There is a 99% confidence level that the population mean lies in between 17.189 and 20.411 Alright Another way to write that Another way to write that is 17.189 is less than or equal to mu, it's less than or equal to 20.411. And it may not actually be or equal to. Yeah, I don't think it is. But either way, you get it.